correct? Yes. So, what was our first uh, previous chapter? It was life processes where we were discussing all about life, correct? We were discussing about respiration, digestion and all the circulation, excretion, everything. So, now all those processes, how are they controlled or how are they coordinating with each and every, uh, each and every one or other uh, systems? So, that one we have to see, right? So, that is why this chapter is your second chapter, control and coordination, which is one of the most interesting chapter, okay? So, here I will tell you first itself like we will be a bit fast. Why? Because it is a one shot revision, correct? So, all the entire contents, all the topics we will be revising in this session itself. So, why do we exactly have this one shot revision? It will actually help you during your exams. So, before your exams, you can just watch our session. You can just go through one session and you can very well appear for your exams because all the important concepts we will be discussing here. All the uh, terminologies or all the questions which you, you will be expecting in your exams we will be discussing here. Alright, so only the main thing we will be discussing so it will be easy for your examination preparation. If you wanted to uh, understand the concept in a very depth or to a very vast uh, way then you have to switch back to the session which we have already discussed in a very very detailed manner. Okay, so having said that, let's pitch into the session of uh, one shot revision. Is that clear? So, here I will be looking at you and if I am looking at here, I will be looking at the live chats. Is that clear? So, here is a camera and here it will be the live chats. Is that okay? Shall we start? Yes. So, first of all, in this chapter, the first terminology which you have to have in mind is this receptor. What is this receptor? What is that? You know very well. So, this is a definition for receptor. But before we pitch into this definition, let me tell you what it is. See, listen, all the control or everything that is happening in our body, you are seeing through your eyes, you are hearing through your ears, you are walking, the skin you have, where you can sense everything, right? So, all this parts, one part is coordinating with the other part. Let me tell you a situation. Somebody is calling you by your name, alright? So, let us say like Preetam it is calling or Balaji, somebody is calling with your name. So, what will you do? You will instantly turn. How are you turning? Somebody is calling, that sound wave is traveling to your ear, banging your eardrum, traveling through your nerves and then reaching your brain. And it is telling, okay, someone is calling, so turn. So, how will you turn? It will sense, it will tell the messages or send messages to your neck because that will help you to turn and your eyes will see who that person is. And then again, the nerves, the optic nerves will capture, okay, this is a person who called you just now. It will tell the information again to your brain. Again, the brain, it will tell information to your tongue or your mouth to speak. Yes or no? So, this is how it is happening. It is not happening such slowly. It will happen in a fraction of a second, but this is a procedure, right? So, for everything, coordination is necessary. Is that clear? So, that is why uh, we need that eyes, that ears, that senses, the skin or the tongue. So, all those are called as the receptors. Is that clear, students? All those are collectively called as receptors here. So, here you will have the definition for receptors. Please go through it. It is a specialized tips of the nerve fibers that collect the information. It can be any sort of information. It can be through the sound, it can be through the light or it can be through the heat, it can be anything. It will just collect the information. So, all those are the nerve tips or nerve endings. Is that clear? So, those things are called as a receptors here. So, it will collect the information by the nerves, it sends to the brain and I mean to the central nervous system and to the peripheral nervous system and it will help in response. Okay, make a note please. Next. So, when we are talking about this receptors, we have five different classifications. Is that clear? So, starting with this uh, phonoreceptors, phone. Why do we say it as phone? So, something which has a relation or something where we can say like it uh, senses some sort of sounds, sound waves, mainly our ears. Okay, for all animals, this is applicable. Phonoreceptors which will receive the sound waves or there where you have the nerve endings which is which will respond to the sound waves and then second photoreceptors photo 
So why do we say photo? Photosynthesis we say, photo we say. What is that photo? Something which detects the light. Okay. So this is something for light. Okay. So all those are the terminologies which you have to have in mind. If you have in mind, then you can write. Especially these uh, kind of questions you will be getting in your two marks. Okay. Say name some receptors or what is the function of the receptors. That time you can write all those things. Thermoreceptors. I'll tell you this. Thermo. What does thermo mean? Thermometer. Thermostat. What is that? Thermo. Thermo flask. So something which relates with the heat. Clear? Something which relates with the heat. So heat means which part of our body is going to sense the heat? Clear. Skin. So our body here, our skin will sense the heat. Is that clear students? Yes? So light now, it is going to be eyes and sound it's going to be ears and uh, heat of course skin the largest organ in our body which is spread all over the body which has the capacity to sense the heat presence and absence of heat so thermoreceptors olfactory receptors what is olfactory olfactory is nothing but the smell is that clear so olfactory means just remember it uh, it denotes something that of the smell, the fragrance that you uh, that you come across. If it is a bad smell or good smell, everything is determined by this nose. So inside the nose, inside linings, you will have very small cilia and that lining is completely made up of this type of receptors or these nerve endings, which will absorb the fragrance, send it to our brain. It will say, okay, absorb it more or it will say, oh my God, please go away. So all those things, please close your nose. All those things or all the information is given by the olfactory receptors only. Last, gustatory receptors. So gustatory receptors are something which in our tongue, the taste buds especially. So it will tell us, okay, this is a sweet taste. This is sour or it is bitter or whatever it is, it tastes in our tongue. Is it clear? So these are the five uh, major receptors, phonoreceptors, photoreceptors, thermoreceptors, olfactory and gustatory. Clear? Made a note? Okay. See, if I'm fast, as I told told you already, it is a revision series, right? So obviously it will be fast. For detailed uh, sessions, you just have to scroll down. There you will get the links for this chapter. We'll be discussing in uh, we've discussed in five different parts, right? So there you will get it, all right? Next. <coughs> so all these receptors are must be controlled by some sort of system. See, for example, when we are talking about digestion, we are eating the food. Where are we chewing the food? In the mouth. It goes through our esophagus, reaches our stomach, from there to small intestine, large intestine, rectum, anus. So all the organs come together, falls as a system. So here, all the receptors are the nerve endings that we know. So all these nerve endings has to be connected together. So all those connections together, we falls into a system. And that system, we say that to be the nervous system. Is it clear? Nervous system, okay. So when we are normally telling about nervous system, the first thing that strikes our mind is the brain. But no. Of course, yes. But uh, what to say? Higher order organisms, as the complexity of organism reaches the apex, the brain is there. For example, you say the lower order organisms like um, Hydra. Hydra, let's say. Okay. Hydra doesn't have a brain or you take this jellyfish, jellyfish doesn't have brain. What do they have? They have nerve net, okay, which means like some sort of nervous system is spread all over their body. Is that clear? Hmm? Yes. So this nervous system is present in all the organisms as except the sponges, some very, very small lower order organism like worms, they will not have this nervous system. But apart from them, all the organisms in the animal kingdom will have this particular system. It will not have as complex as humans or as complex as a lion or a tiger or a cat. But it will have where it can sense something, where it responds to the stimuli, where it um, secretes the toxins to the neurotoxins it will secrete. Is that clear? Okay. So nervous system is something whenever you are... Uh, listening to this particular term as nervous system, the first thing that has to come to your mind is the nerves. 
all nerves. Okay, so what are nerves? Now the, we just have to think about it. What are nerves then? So nerves or the nerve cell is a specialized cell actually, special type of cells or it is a modified cell. Normally when you say a cell, what will come to your mind? It will be like this, let's say like animal cell. It will have nucleus in the center. It will have mitochondria and it will have the cytoplasm. It will have a lot of other things. So normally cell looks like this. Plant cell, you will draw like this and you will have a large vacuole. You will have a nucleus, uh, then chloroplasts, mitochondria, ribosomes, body, body bodies, everything you will have. So that is a normal cell, basic cell. But there are different specialized or modified cells. Okay, so when we are talking about the modified cells, this is one of a specialized cell, the nerve cell. So this entire is one single cell. And you will not believe this cell can be from one centimeter in length, from, from one centimeter in length to three feet in length. One single cell, it can run such long distance. Three feet, where will it run? The spinal cord is there, right? Our spinal cord. So from there, all the way down to our big toe, it will run as a single cell. So that is why if, uh, let's say like some mosquitoes coming and biting your uh, big toe, you will know, okay, fine, some mosquitoes biting, let's go hit it. Yes or no? So because it is a single one long cell. And why has nature given us like that? If there is a break in the middle, sometimes the information might not pass. It will pass, but I'm telling you, sometimes it might not pass. So if it is a single one pathway, it is easy for the information to crawl and go up. Is it clear? Yes. So now, talking about this nerve cell, okay. So you just have to uh, look, a uh, diagram is very simple. You just have a head and you will have an axon and you will have an axon terminal, simple. Okay. So now, what are the parts of a nerve system or the, sorry, what are the parts of the neuron or a nerve cell? See, this is a head or we can say this to be a cell body. Cell body is where the nucleus is there, cytoplasm is there, mitochondria is there. So all those information or maximum information will be present in that particular concentrated area. Yeah. Okay. So that is why you call this to be a cell body. And these hair like structures, you call this to be a dendrites, which will grab the information from the nearby nerve cell. Okay. And then once the information passes, it will pass through the nucleus. It will pass through this area. Axon. So axon is just like a pathway where the impulses travel. So what are impulses? Impulses are the messages that travels. Is it clear? So uh, if somebody, something is happening to you, somebody is patting you on the shoulder. So from here, somebody is touching you. So that touch passes as an impulse. Is it clear? Yes. So this passes through this axon where it is surrounded by the myelin sheath. Okay. So it is just surrounded. So all this yellow color something you say, it's like the uh, a covering, like a cap, cap, cap it will be. Okay. So it is uh, passing through the uh, axon and this impulse passes here to the axon terminal. So this one you call this to be a terminal where we'll say this to be an axon terminal. Okay. Clear? Yes. So from here, the other cell starts. So you will have a dendrite and you will have an axon and you will have a terminal. Okay. And it keeps on flow. It keeps on as a chain. It goes off. Is it clear? The information the dendrite will collect, it will pass through the cell body there, the nucleus will pass on the information and it will pass through the axon. So as it passing through the axon, it will go to the axon terminal there where the impulses are transmitted to the other nearby neuron. So when this is transmitting to the nearby neuron, how is it transmitting? Come on, how is it directly giving? The impulse is passing, but how? There is one particular good word, keep thinking. Meanwhile, I will tell you the definitions for the cell body and all those things, okay? Yes. So, cell body or the cyton is a star-shaped mini hair-like structures. The hair-like structures that we saw here, right? The dendrites. So, this one. Clear? Next. Call the dendrites. Then, axon has several hair-like structures again, which is the axon terminal in the end, okay? And then, it uh, relays the nerve impulses or we can say like terminals relay nerve impulses. What is this relay? Passes on. Okay, I'll tell you like once we are learning about the different uh, neurons or the reflex arc, that then you will come to know what is a relay. Then 
Myelin sheath, it just insulates the axon against the nerve impulses from the surroundings because there are so many nerves will be there, right? So it needs some sort of insulation because the electric impulses kind of thing will pass. So charging shouldn't happen. So that is why you will have this insulation. And then, so now, yes, I should. See, listen, I told you one nerve passes on the information to the other nerve. So how is it passing? This nerve ending and the dendroid, they are not sticking together. Is it clear? It is not sticking. Some very minute gap is there. See, for example, where will I draw? I'll draw here. Okay. Can you see? No? Okay. See, listen. So, let's say this is the nerve ending and this is another nerve. Dendrite of another nerve. Okay. We'll say this to be N1 I'll put. This one I'll put N2. So, this there is a gap here. Can you see this gap? Yes. So, in this gap, the information passes. Alright. The impulses pass. So, that gap, you call that to be synapsis. Is it clear? Make a note of this definition. Very, very important. It's a very important two mark. Seriously. Yes. Certain terminologies you just have to have in biology. You should have it in your mind. Okay. This is one such thing. So the point contact between the terminal uh, bran terminal branches of the axon of one neuron with the dendrite of another neuron or it can be to the muscle. Okay. Yeah. Dendrite of another neuron is called as a synapsis. Is it clear? Okay. So it will be the terminal of an axon of one neuron and the dendrite because it starts with the dendrite ends in the axon terminal. Starts again, it starts, it passes the information and it ends in the uh, axon terminal. So, this axon terminal, if it is continued by a dendrite, then this gap you say to be synapsis. Or if it is not ending it in the another dendrite, it is directly ending in any of the receptor, then you say that to be neuromuscular junction. See here? Okay. Usually it is muscles only, right? So, eardrum, muscle only, the skin everywhere, it is a muscle only, okay? The skin thing. See here, the NMJ, let me erase this. Okay? Neuromuscular junction is a point where the muscle fiber comes in contact with a motor neuron, carrying the nerve impulses from or from the control nervous system. Is that clear? Is it clear what is uh, NMJ? Neuromuscular junction. Okay, very simple. So, next. So, now neuron is clear. Receptors, we saw from receptors, how is it receiving? By the nerves only. So, what is a nerve we saw? We saw, okay, this is a parts of the nerves. And how is it traveling? The synapses, clear? So, now when we are talking about this, yeah, yeah, one more bit is there. I mean, like one more small subtopic is there. When we are discussing about the reflex R, I'll tell you. Okay, the different types of neuron which you know. Now, so when we are talking about this human nervous system, it is of two types, central, peripheral. So central is something which comprises of your brain and your spinal cord. And peripheral nervous system, all the nerves that, they are, that are arising from the brain and also the spinal cord. Is that clear? Clear? Okay, shall we proceed? Okay, so central nervous system, this composed of brain and the spinal cord as he said. The, it controls the functions in the human body. Spinal cord works as a relay channel for the uh, signals between the brain and the peripheral nervous system. Okay, it is just a pathway. Okay, but it has multiple functions. You will not believe the spinal cord. It has multiple functions. But main central processing unit for a human is our brain. Next. So, when we are talking about human brain, obviously the structure you just have to know. So, it is a highly complex uh, muscular organ or it is not muscular, it is a highly complex organ, okay. Uh, and it is a very soft feeble organ as well and that is why it is safely present inside our skull, okay. And inside the skull, when the brain is there, let us say like this is a brain. I will take another color, okay. It is good. Can you see now? Oh yeah. Here the brain is there. Can you see the brain clearly? No. I'll draw a brain. Say this is a brain, spine, let's say. Okay. So let's say like this is a skull. Where is the skull? I'll put green for the skull, okay? 
this is a skull so inside the skull you have the brain and there is a very thin fluid that is present in this gap here okay so you say that to be cerebrospinal fluid excuse me excuse me <coughs> so you say that to be cerebrospinal fluid why do you say that to be cerebrospinal i'll write it in black so that it will be clear for you cerebrospinal fluid now clear clear it is the fluid which will protect our brain from the external shocks and injuries okay so even in heart we have the cardio fluid right the pericardium is there which will, pericardium heart will be there and inside the pericardium layer and the heart muscular muscular structure you will have the pericardial fluid so similarly here you have the cerebrospinal fluid which will protect the it's just like a lubricating mechanism okay yes so now and then yes here it is cerebrospinal fluid and then here it is covered by three layers and those three layers in the brain you call that to be meninges clear yes so next so this is a brain structure and this brain it is being divided into three different parts okay three different parts fore brain mid brain and hind brain so fore brain is a maximum structure maybe it takes around 60% of the brain's capacity all right my mid brain is very very small when compared to the fore and the hind hind brain is where you will have in the ending here you will have and it extends into the brain stem also you have and then it extends as a spinal cord is that clear so those are the three different parts of a brain so here you see fore brain it consists of cerebrum thalamus hypothalamus okay so cerebrum here this is a maximum structure and thalamus is here actually hypothalamus is here is it visible hmm. so then you have the midbrain when we are talking about midbrain you have only two parts tectum tegmentum even you internally see there are actually four parts in the midbrain but if you remember tectum and tegmentum it is well and good all right and then where is this yeah hind brain hind brain you have all the cerebellum you have and medulla oblongata you have and pons you have medulla oblongata is one single word there is no comma okay clear hmm. next we'll just uh, discuss about the each and every parts now okay starting with the fore brain well, what did we see we saw the cerebrum and the thalamus and hypothalamus right we'll just discuss the functions of it first starting with the cerebrum so it helps in the voluntary motor action so what are the voluntary motor actions so all the voluntary actions when you stand sit eat listen study your memory everything is controlled by your fore brain only even your uh, logical thinking or problem solving your intelligence everything is controlled in the fore brain so maximum voluntary actions is controlled here and the say at the same time uh, like uh, when you study it goes stores in your memory and uh, your childhood memory the long term memory the short term memory everything is controlled in the fore brain and in the fore brain especially in the cerebrum region next you have this thalamus and hypothalamus together thalamus like it helps you most preferably in the sleep and the wake cycle for example for continuously if you are sleeping at 10 o'clock and you are waking up at 5:30 let's say that's a usual time right that's a good time as well let's say like you are waking up at 5:30 for uh, a week let's say 4 5 days you are like that and in the sixth day automatically you will wake up at 5:30 yes because it that is how your body will be designed that's how your brain will tell okay fine now you have to wake up it has been so and so hard okay so that sleep and wake cycle is completely monitored by this hypothalamus region thalamus and the hypothalamus or the fore brain as a whole is it clear so that is why people will say you just have to have follow the same sleep cycle one day if you are waking up at 4:30 the other day at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock it's not going to help because our brain will get confused is it clear ah. so that first initially you just have to practice your brain to sleep in one particular time and wake up in the other time people who are working nowadays no they are having some night shifts and then they'll have day shifts they cannot have a peace of mind usually because of the disturbance like this fore brain okay and then we'll talk about this mid brain mid brain it uh, mostly it focuses on the voluntary actions only 
voluntary actions and, and also the involuntary actions like respiration, it is all controlled by the midbrain. Okay, you don't have more elaboration on midbrain, just if you have the what is the basic function that will do. Next, the hindbrain. So, when we are talking about the hindbrain, three things you just have to have in mind cerebellum, medulla oblongata, and then the pons. So, cerebrum, what all functions the cerebrum does? Similar function the cerebellum also does. It is a very hard structure which is present over here. It is present, see, can you see that? That's a very hard structure, hard, no, not that hard. When you compare to the other soft brain, this will be a bit more uh, harder. Clear? So now, so cerebrum lies in the cerebrum and at the back of the whole structure and it coordinates the motor functions. What is a motor function? So here, this is a very important term. What's a motor function? Your voluntary actions? Yes. And at the same time, it is not just your voluntary action where you sleep, work, get up, eat, watch TV, learn. No, it's including that you have another uh, function. For example, like when uh, it doesn't start running as soon as it is born, right? It will take time. Hardly it will take 9 to 10 months for it to stand and start working. So for it to stand and start working, what is the first step that it does? It will balance itself. It will try to crawl. Correct, first it will try to turn and then it will crawl, then it will stand, then it will walk and then it will run. Yes or no? Yes. So that is actually one of the motor memories work. Wait a second, I will wipe my foot. Clear? And at the same time, or to be very more easy, I will tell you. By this time you would have started learning your bicycle, right? Most of you would have started riding your bike. So, uh, bikes also correct so the moment you started stepping on to the cycle did you ride just like that it cannot happen you have to learn the balance swimming let's take or bike let's take or walking on the uh, rope let's take or gymnastic you take anything first thing what you should learn in life is balance the moment of um, what to say the equilibrium should be maintained Yes or no? Yes. So that equilibrium maintenance is carried or taken care by the cerebellum. So once you start riding your bike, even that particular memory goes and stores subconsciously in your brain. It is not something which you learned when you were in the womb. You started learning it. And that particular process of learning, slowly it, from the voluntary action, it will slowly transform into the involuntary actions there. Is it clear? So that involuntary action gets coded in your cerebellum area here. Here I said right. So there it gets coded. So there where it determines, okay, this is how you should maintain the balance. Is that clear? Yes. So that function is taken care by the cerebellum. Okay, now you understand what is the exact function of the cerebellum or what is the motor function in the cerebellum? Is this. Next you have this medulla oblongata very very important because it controls the involuntary actions of us so what sort of involuntary actions something which is out of our control let's say like the heartbeat or respiration heartbeat is something which has to happen 24 bar 7 even if it says okay one hour let me take rest gone correct so the same thing for the respiration also so all those very major involuntary actions are taken care by the medulla oblongata so what is the function of the uh, pons there then it relays the impulses between the lower cerebral, cerebellum area to the brain stem there or the spinal cord, okay. Brain stem, it will slowly start, uh, it will extend as a spinal cord, <coughs> okay. And then like the cerebrum and midbrain also, it regulates the respiration process, okay. Because our respiration actually when we, we are in the plane, it changes. When you start walking, jogging, it will change. When you weight lift, Obviously, it will change. So, that regulation has to be maintained, right? So, that will be maintained by the pons here. Clear? Done. Next. Yeah. So, this is about the central nervous system. Central nervous system is all about the brain and the spinal cord, okay? And next, you have this uh, peripheral nervous system, which is composed of the nerves, okay? The cranial nerves and the um, spinal nerves, all right? So, what are cranial nerves? So, cranial nerves are nothing but which comes from the brain. 
So directly, for example, your nose, your eyes, all the sensory organs or major sensory organs, the the what is it? The impulses or the messages are transferred from the brain to the eyes, from the eyes back to the brain, and then to the mouth. So even now, if I'm talking to you, what am I talking to you? Sorry, what am I take teaching? So it is coming from my brain, right? So all those functions, it is by this twelve pair of the cranial nerves, it controls. All right. And then you have this uh, spinal nerves. One second. Okay. And then you have this. Sorry, sorry. Where am I? Hmm. And then you have this 31 pairs of spinal nerves. So all the nerves that arises from the brain and all the nerves that arises from the spinal cord is called as a peripheral nervous system. Is it clear? So we talked about the brain. Spinal cord, it's just a column. Okay. It controls all the involuntary functions of us. The sleep-wake cycle, let it be. Or in the mid, uh, you will feel thirsty. Yeah. So, how is it possible? It is all because of the medulla oblongata connected with the spinal nerves only. Okay. Spinal cord, it is safely present inside the vertebral column. So, vertebral column, you know. Yes, the bones. The back bones, when you touch and see, you will have, right? So, that is the vertebral column. So, how many vertebral column you have? 33 you have. And as we become adult, no, it will compress. So, here somewhere it compresses and it will become like around 25, something it varies again. 25 to 30, it will become the number depending upon the adult. But when a child is born, it will be 33. Okay. Next. Yeah. When we are talking about this nervous system again, you have two types. Somatic nervous system, autonomic nervous system. So, somatic nervous system is something which controls the voluntary actions, okay. So, it will control all the voluntary actions. So, autonomic nervous system will control all the involuntary actions. Is that clear? So, somatic nervous system, it controls all the voluntary and here we can say it controls all the involuntary. Now, nerves again, okay. So, uh, brain, spine, the nerves, Everything you have the difference, voluntary and involuntary, and you know what it is, okay. But detailed, you should go down, scroll, and you have to find. Yes, this is interesting. Mm. One of the most interesting segment in this chapter is the reflex action. Or we can say like reflex arc. Okay, I'll tell you what it is. See, listen, what is a reflex? Hmm? The sudden response to a stimuli, you say that to be a reflex. Somebody is coming and poking your eyes. My eyes, maybe I will not close my eyes because I have uh, protection. Maybe people who are not having will actually close their eyes, okay, even I will close my eyes all of a sudden if something is coming there. So, that is a reflex. It is not controlled by you, right. Though it is your eyes, though like it will tell, it will listen to you, okay, watch this, do not watch this, it will listen to you. But some, uh, some, uh, what is it, some informations are happening or some, uh, uh, Processes are happening, actions, yes, this is the exact word. Some actions are happening without your control. Yeah, so those, sorry, those are called as the involuntary actions and that is especially called as a reflex actions. Is that clear? Good. So, it is a moment of involuntary, involuntary moment of the involuntary organs especially and this pathway you just have to have in mind. So, receptor. It passes the information to the sensory neuron, from sensory neuron to the relay neuron, relay neuron to the motor neuron and then it slowly passes to our effector, in this case muscle. It's not necessary muscle, it can be anything but most preferably muscle. Is that clear? So, make a note of this pathway from the receptor or let's say like the eyes, okay. Eyes or skin, let's say that's a good receptor. So, from the skin to the sensory nerves it passes. So, from the sensory nerves, it passes through the relay neuron, relay neuron to the motor neuron, motor neuron to the effector neuron. Oh, oh, effector neuron. So, here this relay neuron, sometimes it might be present. It is not like uh, in all the cases, everywhere in the body relay neuron will be there. No, only in some cases it will be there, some cases it will not be there. It is not necessary that it has to be there. If it is a very long chain, it will be there. Clear? We'll listen to this arc also, it will be easy. Reflex arc. The path through which the nerve signals involved in the reflex action travels is called as a reflex arc. So, here it is there, right? 
So when you are writing it in the straight line, it will be like this. But it is just like this, an arc. Okay, we will see this. Don't worry. So this is a reflex arc, let's say. Yeah? So in this story, yeah, if you watch this session, no, where we elaborated the session, it's a very beautiful diagram. We went to our class in the light board room. There we drew a very beautiful diagram and explained. Do watch that session. It will be so good. Even I liked it. Okay, see, listen. Now in this case, what is happening? This hand is trying to touch a hot object. Of course, we will not go touch, but sometimes we do, right? Or small kids, like, uh, they do. So let's say like we are touching a hot pan or a hot, hot some object. So what will happen? The skin will sense hot, but it is not this finger itself reacting to it. No, it is not reacting. So what is reacting? Our reaction, if for example, like I am touching this hot object. Okay, let's say like, ah, okay. So when I'm trying or telling like it is hot, I'm not moving this finger. I'll be moving my entire hand. So here this muzzle takes. So if I touch something like this, I'll move it like this. Okay. So for that movement, I need some work on this muscle. Or somebody has to tell this muscle to contract. Okay. So this contraction, the relaxation of a muscle only moves our hand. Same thing for our leg. Contraction and relaxation only helps us in walking and all those things. Is that clear? Good. So now what is happening? The hand is touching the hot object. So as soon as it's touching this neuron, so this here in this case, our skin is a receptor. So from the receptor, the signal is passing through the sensory neuron because that neuron is sensing something. Okay, so sensory neuron, it passes slowly the pink color. Where it is? It's not mind, I'll mark. Okay, so this one, let me say this to be a sensory neuron. Okay, sensory neuron. It is going all the way to this place. So, what is this place? So, this is a CS, sorry, CS of a spinal cord. What is called as a CS? Simple. Cross section. So, this is cylindrical, let's say. If you see like this, you can see the exact uh, shape, right? So, that is called as a CS. So, the spinal cord is like this, like this. So, we have cut like this and we are watching on top, the top view or the cross section. Is that clear? Okay. So, this is the top view. Hmm? So, now, so it is passing through the spinal cord. Now, you may ask, why it is not going to the brain? By the time it will take time and here the pain will be too much, the damage will be too much. So, that is why everything will be solved then and there. Okay. So, from something is happening in our legs, let's say. Our, our spinal cord in the bottom of our hip there. So, from there only the nerve ending goes. Hold it, if it is a very major thing, only it will reach our brain. Is that clear? For example, like if you are making something, doing something in your home, first thing whom you will approach, obviously mommy, you will tell mommy, mommy this happened. Then if it is a very big issue, it will be escalated to daddy. Then daddy will take a call. Yes or no? So, same thing happens. If you want to buy something also, first point of contact will be Mummy for most of them, right? For me, my mummy only. Okay. So, what was I telling? Yes. So, sensory neuron, it passes through here in this spinal cord there. So, spinal cord, here you have this relay neuron. Okay. Relay neuron. So, why do we say that to be new relay neuron? This game, you know, right? Relay, we'll say. Four people will be standing 400 meters. In every 100 meter, a person will stand. They'll take a pole kind of things. They'll run, pass it to the person two. And the two will run to the three, three to the four, and four to the final point, right? The the entire game, we say that we relay. Yes or no? So, same thing only. The information is passing through the relay neuron. And here, that is why I said, in some cases, you this relay neuron will be there. In some cases, it will not be there, okay? So, here. And then, it, this information again. Information now impulses. So, this impulses will pass through this effect or neuron. Okay. Effect or efferent neuron, whatever it is. Effect or also you can say, efferent also you can say, because it is doing some action. Okay. So, now it will pass through the, not here, it will not go there. It will pass, go to the muscle there. So, here you will have the nerve endings, right? And it is nerve endings, it is ended in the way, muscle. So, this is the neuro Wait, where is this? 
Ah, so this is a neuromuscular junction. Okay, neuromuscular junction. So there where the neurons, the end, the axon terminal connects with the muscle there. So to the muscle, it will say, okay, pull your hand back soon before it gets damaged. And then it will do it. See, how much time did I take to tell this process? But it will not happen this much time. It will happen in a fraction of a second. So now, this pathway is clear, right? Clear? Good. So now, why is this pathway there? See, listen. Sometimes we will feel like pain is there, right? The pain is actually good. If pain is not there, maybe uh, what do people tell? But see, listen, in biology, pain is good. If pain is not there, we will not know what is happening in our body. So if only if your stomach pains, you will know something is something what you ate last night, it's not good. Or if something like you are touching your fire, the damage is going to be obviously. So with the pain, you will come to know, okay, fine, this is this is needed, this is not needed. This is tolerable. So all these benchmarks we can keep only when we experience that pain. So sometimes pain is good in biology, okay? So is this clear? So this travels as a arc there. Okay, so that is why we call this to be a reflex arc. Okay. So normally now, I told you like we'll be talking about the neurons, right? So here you see the normal neuron. Let me clear this. So you want to take a screenshot, you can take a very well. Because I'll clear this one now. Done. Okay. See, listen. Normal neuron, let's say like it is like this. You will have an axon and you will have the axon terminal. This is a normal neuron. You will have a cell body here. Certain neurons are there. See where like it will have the dendrites like this. And then here you will have the cell body and then the axon terminal. Here the axon things will be there, the myelin sheet, everything will be there. So there are different types. For example, in the starting, this region will not be there. The cell body will be there directly. There are three different major neurons. So one is a neuron or we can say sensory neuron, relay neuron. And then you have this efferent neuron or the effector neuron. Okay, three major neurons. Clear? Done. We'll move. With this, the nervous system and all those things are over, okay? We can say like control is done. So now we will move to the endocrine system. When we are talking about this endocrine system, first thing that should come to our mind is the endocrine glands. What are endocrine glands? Tell me. What are endocrine glands? Are you thinking? I'll tell you. See, listen. There are two major glands in our body, okay? One is exocrine and another is the endocrine. Exo, outside. Endo, inside. Simple. So, exo means what? Something which secretes something outside. Okay. So, endo means, of course, it is secreting inside. That's all. See, listen. In exocrine gland, let's say, uh, hmm. All the, all the, what to say, the secretions will happen outside the body. For example, in majority, okay, I'm not telling like every exocrine gland secretes outside, but major. Let's say like the salivary gland. You can do like this and you can get the saliva, right? Yes, it is secreted by our uh, salivary glands which is present here. It flows into our mouth. Tear glands, you have here around the eyes you have. And when you cry, it will obviously come out. Sweat glands you have, you sweat a lot. It comes out. See, even I am sweating. I will wipe it, okay? Clear? So, those are exocrine glands which secretes the secretion outside the body. So, what is endocrine gland? So, how is it actually secreting? So, gland is there. See, for example, let us say the tear gland. You have the gland here. It secretes here only and it pours down. Salivary gland, you have the gland here. It secretes out. It pours into the mouth. So, these glands will have minute tubes. Okay, it will have tubes. So, those tubes you call that to be ducts. Ducts are there. Okay, the small pipeline structure you call that to be ducts. So, endocrine glands, they don't have ducts. So, you say this to be ductless glands. 
something is disturbing. Duckless glands, okay. Clear? So, if without ducts, then what are they doing? They are also secreting. Directly, they will release in the blood. Okay, so blood we have the transporting mechanism which carries information, not information, I am sorry. So it carries the food, oxygen, hormones that are secreted by this endocrine glands only. Is it clear? And water and minerals also it carries. Clear with you? Yes. So first when we are talking about this endocrine system, first thing that should come to your mind is the endocrine glands. So what are the endocrine glands? The glands, I mean the ductless glands which are, which helps in the Secretion of hormones, you call that to be endocrine glands. So, what are hormones? Chemical messengers which are secreted in the blood for some reasonable work. Is it clear? So, what are hormones? Hormones are produced in the endocrine glands. Chemical messengers which are secreted in very, very small level. Small level now, we cannot tell that it is a very small level. It is a reasonable level. How much we want? That much it is secreted actually. Clear? Yes, so they are like very small specialized tissues, oh sorry, hormones are chemical messengers which are secreted in a smaller ratio or very small amounts by the specialized tissues called the ductless glands or the endocrine glands. Clear? Next, in our body we have different endocrine glands, right? Five major glands we will study. Starting with the pituitary gland and then you have the gonads, this is the gonads and you have pancreas, thyroid you have, adrenal you have, there are a lot more but still these are the major uh, glands, okay. Starting with the pituitary gland, white, master gland, okay. Why do we say it as master gland? It's like it is something which is present in the brain, see, can you see here, the location of the pituitary gland, it is present in the brain and it controls all the other hormones or all the other glands that produces or secretes the hormone that is why you call this to be a master gland okay and its weight is very very small 0 0.5 grams only it will be where will i write i'll write it here 0 0.5 grams very very small even lesser than that okay so what all will it control first thing i said it will control all the other glands and especially it helps in the growth hormone okay so, growth hormone is something which will be secreted throughout, not throughout your life. Maybe it will be secreted because you have to grow vertically and horizontally, right? Yes, <laughs> not that especially, but you will grow in height. Especially when you are in your adolescent, no rapid growth happens. Your bones will get longer, your muscle will start growing. So, all those growth is being, um, what say, monitored by this pituitary gland only. So, if this growth hormone is not secreted in a reasonable level, it will result to a condition called as a dwarfism, where the organism, where human, will not grow to a reasonable height or to a normal height. They will not grow. They will be short. Dwarf, we say. Or sometimes when it is secreted more, it will result in another condition called as a gigantism. Gigantism is like too much taller. Clear? So, this growth hormone has to be regulated in such a way that it is being maintained, okay, growth hormone. And then thyroid stimulating hormone, the THS. Here we have the thyroid gland, right? So this thyroid hormone is there called as a, what to say, thyroid gland, it secretes another hormone, thyroxine. But here, this thyroid should function properly. For that, it will help uh, in secreting the hormone called as a thyroid stimulating hormone. And then you have the follicle stimulating hormone, which especially helps in the gonads thing. Is it clear? So that is why we call it has other functions also. These are the three major functions. The thing you just have to have in mind is like it's a master gland which controls all other glands. Clear? Thyroid glands. Especially, especially it secretes this hormone called as a thyroxine. It secretes in the animals, human, everywhere. All right. The thyroid gland especially it is present in the throat region. It will have the shape of a butterfly. For example, it will be like this. It will be like this in the throat. So, this is the trachea, let's say. Can you see? Huh? Okay. So, here where the gland will be there, the thyroid gland, <coughs> which will help in, it helps in the maintaining or regulates the body functions also. And it uh, maintains the, what you say, iodine level in our blood. 
for example, the iodine level is insufficient, it will result to a condition called as a goiter. What is goiter? Goiter. So, goiter is a condition where people or the organism, sorry, or the individual when it is lacking the iodine level, this gland will swell. Normally, when you see human, no, females, especially when they are pregnant, the gland will swell, naturally it will swell. The size of the gland, it varies again, 20 to 35 grams it varies. For females, it will be a bit more, larger in size when compared to the female or male. Because we will have uh, some cycles we have where the uh, other, uh, other hormones also will be producing monthly, right? So, that time or and during the pregnancy time, it will swell, normally we will have females will have and again when after pregnancy after the delivery of the baby it will come back to the normal okay so this especially it is because of why do this condition comes the goiter condition lack of iodine that is why in advertisements all when you see like okay this is an iodized salt please purchase it they say right it is all because of that see uh, if you if your mother is cooking no i would recommend you or would suggest you to go for the sea salt other salts also you can use Himalayan rock salt that this you can use. But it will be better if you use the organic uh, original salts that we get from the sea. Naturally, it will be crystals. If you want the powder, crush it and make it powder. Simple. That salts will do. All the mineral content will be there itself because that is one of the nature's gift, right? Okay. Yes, pituitary gland. Second is the thyroid gland. And then you have the adrenal gland. Very important gland. So, what is the adrenal gland? You say that to be fight, fright, flight. Okay, three F you can say. First thing is like if you are getting scared, we will get goosebumps. Even I will get it if I am scared. When I was in your age, all know when my marks are reduced. I was a talker only. But sometimes for this two marks, three marks also I will get scared. So that I when I am producing my report cards to my mommy daddy, it will obviously all my goosebumps will stand. All right. So that is a fright. So, where it is exactly present, it is present upon a kidney. So, let us say like this is a kidney, kidney bean. So, here as a cap it will stand. Can you see? It will be like a cap for the kidney. I'll erase. Huh? Okay, fright. Then, flight. Sorry, fight, fright and flight. So, now if it is fright, you will get it. And if you want to fight against somebody, okay, you are getting angry, very, very angry. We should not get angry. They say like, okay, animals are getting angry, okay. So, when they are getting angry, when they are about to fight, obviously this adrenal will secrete. And let us say like, some other organism like a cat is going to eat a rat. So, a rat will see the cat, it will get frightened and it will fly, it will fly away. I mean, not fly, it will get uh, run away. Right. So, for those instant moments, this adrenal helps, okay. Or we can say like at the extreme moments, this adrenal helps. So, that is why you say that to be fight, fright, flight hormone. Okay. And it actually prepares or the, what to say, this is the gland, adrenal gland. Adrenaline is a hormone and it helps or it prepares the body for the emergency situations. Is it clear? And this is more in animals when compared to human because we don't have that much of uh, emergency situations right when compared to a very small squirrel very small rat you should always be scared of its life but as humans we don't have those things so no yes then you have this pancreas so this is a beautiful gland yeah why because it's a dual gland why do we say it as a dual because it acts as an exo also and also as an endo why or how as an exocrine it has ducts okay majorly it helps in the process of digestion. In our previous life processes lesson, put this there, okay, it becomes bolus, it becomes chyme, it stays in the stomach, it goes to the duodenum, right? So, there where this pancreas ejects or pours its pancreatic juice into it. And those, what, will, what it will contain? It will contain trypsin and chymotrypsin. Yes or no? Which helps in the breakdown of protein. Yes? Trypsin and chymotrypsin as an exocrine gland, it will secrete. So, now as an endocrine gland, what it secretes? It will secrete insulin and glucagon. Okay. So, insulin, let us say, glucagon, yes, insulin. So, it is, by, it is secreted by the beta cells of pancreas and this glucagon alpha cells. Actually, 
and glucagon both will control the blood sugar level. When is that question? If your blood sugar level or not your, if somebody is the person who is having diabetes, let's say, if there is a blood sugar level is low, they will have low sugar, which means like their body cells will lack glucose. They will start fainting. Clear? So, instantly to recognize them what will we do we'll give them chocolate they'll uh, some sweet or glucose they'll get they'll come back to the energy level okay so that low glucose level will be maintained or it will be regulated by this glucagon only when it is low uh, sugar level pancreas will secrete this glucagon it will say oh this is low sugar please raise it up it will say if it is a high sugar same thing happens high sugar also we cannot control so that time this insulin comes to picture where the pancreas will say, oh, go secrete, this insulin will be secreted, the high sugar level will be controlled by this insulin, clear, okay. Two glucose, sorry, what is this? Ah, insulin and glucagon, okay. So then, gonads. When we are telling about gonads, two different um, organs involved in it, two different organs, different organs, different hormones. Is that clear? So, together we say this to be gonads. Both male and female. Male have testis, female have ovaries. So, testis is an organ, ovary is an organ. So, testis, what will it do? Testosterone is a hormone. So, this testosterone will secrete or will help in the production of sperms, development of the sperms and it will help, the, help to maintain the what is it? Maintain the sperms to be healthy. Okay. So, that it's actually because or what to say? It is a function of this testosterone. Sperm production, development of the secondary sexual characters during the puberty. Same thing for female also. Estrogen. There is another hormone, progesterone. Progesterone mainly comes to picture when, in, when a female is pregnant. Okay. During the menstrual cycle, progesterone and estrogen comes to picture. But one of the major among them, both are equal only. If you have estrogen in mind, it is well and good. All right. And again, because the estrogen is something which helps in the egg production. And um, once the egg is prepared or produced and then it is fertilized, then progesterone comes. Clear? Cool. Next. Oh, okay. So, these are the six, oh, sorry, five uh, um, endocrine glands. Okay. So, what all was that? Pituitary, thyroid. And then pancreas, adrenal, gonads. Clear? Now, control and coordination in plants. All right. So, so far we were discussing about the control and coordination in animals, right? So, we were talking about this nerves. We were talking about this endocrine glands. <coughs> yes, the reflex arc which you just have to have in mind. So, now you have this control and coordination in plants. All right. Plants, they don't have a nervous system or a brain kind of thing like us. But even they coordinate very well. Clear? So now, uh, when we are talking about the control and coordination in plants, what are the different things that is happening? Growth is happening. Stimulus is happening. Yes. So when we are talking about the growth, what sort of growth is this? Horizontal, sorry, vertical growth. Towards the sun, towards water, then, then towards the support. So there are different types of growth, right? So, those all will come under this tropic movements. Nastic movements are something which when the plant responds to touch, okay, it does not, uh, it is a different thing, different scenario, different concept itself, we will discuss. First, talking about this tropic movements, first thing that comes to our mind is a geotropic movement, okay. So, geotropic is something where the plant grows towards the gravity. Or we cannot say that it is growing towards the gravity, which means like gravitational pull is acting on the plant, it is pulling them down. No, yes, okay, but still it is not exactly like that. Water, sorry, in search of water, the plant grows, but anyway, it grows down, half of it grows down, the remaining half grows up, yes or no? So, this is a shoot which grows up and this is a root that comes down. So, this we say this to be positive. We say this to be positive geotropic and this we say negative geotropic. Why do we say positive negative? Because when it is a geotropic movement, 
one is growing towards the gravity which is a good sign for it okay so we say that to be positive geotropic and when it is going against the gravity you say that to be negative geotropic is it clear so two types in everything you will have these two types don't worry hmm? so next you have phototropic so this is the exact opposite photo again photo means it is light okay so going towards light or going against light so growth of plant in response to light is called as a phototropic here also you have positive and you have negative if it is growing if the because all the shoots will grow positive right or it will go towards the light all the roots will go against the light so positive negative then thigmotropic moment thigmotropic is one of the interesting moment why i will tell you i'll take red till it will be fine you can see okay so thigmotropic moments thig means something which is response to touch let's say all the climbers creepers they don't have the uh, they don't have proper stem like uh, other plants like banyan tree mango tree normal drumstick tree they will not have a proper stem so what do they have they have this one all right so this with the help of their branches kind of thing they'll help or they'll go search for their supports lenticels yes lenticels so they'll go search for the support there so that is why it it is called as or they are sensitive to touch so once they find a climber sorry once they find a very strong support like a wall or another tree or some other branch or anything it might be for this matter they'll go wind around it and start growing so if it is growing on top you say that to be creepers growing on ground you say that to be climbers oh opposite if they are growing on top you say that to be climbers and if it is on the ground you say that to be creeper clear so yeah so growth of plant part in response to touch is called as a response to touch is called as thigmotropism or thigmotropic movements so it is not thigmotropism movement you can say thigmotropism cut this movement or if you want to include this movement you can say that to be thigmotropic tropic sorry thigmotropic movement okay so how is it happening it is happening by the tendrils is that clear so this part or this soft uh, segment or the part which goes in search you say that to be tendrils clear next hydrotropic against water away from water again so mostly all roots okay which grow in the soil usually grow towards the nearest source of water positive hydrotropic movement for example this is a tree let's say these are the its roots okay and here is a water source so this roots will grow towards the water it is a natural what is it nobody is telling the plant there is water go nobody is telling because for you we should be elders should be keep on reminding drink enough water you have to drink 2 liters per day we are continuously telling right for the plants who is telling nobody is telling it is just knows okay we have to drink water if not we will not survive right so yes so when it is growing towards the water it takes the water right it absorbs the water prepare its food clear or not yes so that one you call that to be hydrotropic movement clear search of uh, what is say ah when roots grow in the soil they usually grow towards the nearest source of water this shows a positive hydrotropic movement clear with the tropics geotropic phototropic hydrotropic three is fine nastic movements let's say see this nastic movement is something like it is not a movement it is not a growth it's a movement okay it's a movement but it is not towards a growth for example when you are telling about the stigmotropic movement it will touch it will climb or it will wind stop growing okay hydrotropic it will go in search of water all the roots will go there i mean yeah it will go there so some sort of growth is happening towards it nastic movements are instant movements for example this background you see what is this mimosa what is mimosa touch me not plant because that is a common term that we use mimosa is the original name of the plant clear yes so when you touch it what it will do it will close not only this take picture plant wait picture plant you take how will it be it will be like this it will have a opening why is my diagram so bad 
I don't draw like this. I'll draw some good eye diagrams usually. Okay, let's say like this is a picture plant. It is having a lid. Okay, mm, one bee is coming and sitting. It is going inside. So when the moment it goes inside, what will happen? It will close. Yes or no? So because here it is going and activating something. It is not seeing with its eyes. Ah, come, va, come, come, be, come inside. It's not telling like that. It is knowing, okay, some sort of uh, something is happening here because this is a digestive enzyme, let's say. But here some uh, cilia kind of thing will be there, which is sensitive to it. Yes or no? So it senses it. Some sort of movement is happening. So that is why it closes. It's an example for nastic movement. Sunflower is there. It says like, okay, it will see the sun every time. So that is why it is a sunflower. That is a nastic movement. So the movement where uh, some action is happening because of some stimulus, some or we can say like, because of some stimulus, some response is happening. Is it clear? But it is not towards the growth. Clear? So that one you say that to be a nastic movement. So a movement in which does not depend on the direction from the stimulus, uh, stimulus acts are called as a nastic movements. Clear? So next. Hmm. Plant hormones, the last segment. Plant hormones, see even plants will have hormones like human, okay? Human means like animals. So what are the major plant hormones? Oxins, gibberellins, cytokinins, abscisic acid. So these four are the major hormones. So in which auxin, gibberellin, cytokinin, these three growth promoting hormones. It helps in the promotion of growth. Abscisic acid, this last one, it inhibits the growth. Heard it? Uh, I'll tell you why. Because what to say? Everything has everything has to be plus minus should be there. Positive negative should be there. Everything should have everything, right? So that is why. So now auxin. Is white color visible? I guess it is visible. I'll take another color. Auxin is a plant hormone that promotes the cell enlargement and growth in the plants. When we are talking about auxin, no, normally plant hormone. Oxen is a major hormone. I'll tell you why. For example, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See here. I have this. Oh, I should go long back. I'll tell you here only. See, listen. See here, this is a sun, let's say. Okay. It is coming through a window. Imagine this to be a window. Not looking like a window. It will look. See, listen. Let's say, okay, this is a sun. Okay. Say okay, this is a window, here you have a pot, plant is there, okay. So only here this is a window which can be opened. So when we are talking about this plant, when you see this plant, usually it will grow like this towards the light. Every plant, even some the canopy, inside the canopy also, no, it will go in search of light. So how is this happening? It is all happening because of this major hormone called as a auxin. So, when let's zoom into this stem and see what will be happening there. So, let's say this is a stem. And this is where the cells are arranged. All these are cells. Okay. Where the chloroplast is present, everything is present. So, all these are the auxins. Auxin is also present inside the cell. Okay. When it is receiving sunlight, these auxins, what it will do is like, to some extent it will receive and it cannot tolerate more too much of sunlight it doesn't want only less sunlight it wants so when less sunlight when it gets sunlight it will go get accumulated in this area all right so here it goes accumulated i'm telling about this auxin so here it is not there this side it is reduced from this side it is moving to this side so auxin helps in cell elongation Right. So, wherever the auxin is present, there it will get elongated. So, this part will gradually become elongated longer because there more oxygen accumulation of auxin is there. Here, this region alone cannot grow. So, it has to, when it is growing here in this area, it has to slowly bend. Yes or no? Because here the cell is very less, it has to bend like this. So, that is how it bends like this. And this one will remain in its own length. Clear? Clear or not? Say, I'll tell it again. I could have erased it fully. Wait. 
So now listen. I'm telling you like this is a normal. Okay, here where the cells are there. Here I said like oxygen will not require more sunlight. So what it will do is like it will move it will move from the region of more sunlight to a region of very less sunlight. So it will move here to this area. So when it is coming to this area, the nature of oxygen to, is to promote the cell elongation. So as it is promoting the cell elongation, what will happen? This region will start growing. But this region will not grow. So here the length will be like this. So this area will match. So these tips are tied or it is together. So obviously it will bend. Yes or no? So when it is bending, it will bend like this. Okay. So from far when we are looking, how it will be? Oh, this plant is going towards the sunlight. It will be like that. But why it is going towards the sunlight? Because of oxen, it is not like going there and going towards the sunlight. It is staying away from sunlight. Since it is staying away from sunlight, where it is there, there cell elongation happens, so it bends. Clear? Good. So in plant hormones, oxygen is something which you just have to have in mind. Next, gibberellin. Yes. So this one, let's say seeds, normal seeds. Hmm. Green gram? Okay, that's easy. No. So green gram, what will happen? When it is a green gram seed safely sealed inside the packet, it's a green gram seed. That's all. It's a gram. But when you collect it, put it in water, soak it in water, the next morning it soaks. If you drain the water, tie it, or even if you don't try it, it will grow. It will sprout, it will become sprout which is highly nutritious. See, the same sprout, if you are putting it in the soil, it will become plants. The same seed, without water, without moisture especially, it is a seed only, it is in the dormant state, sleeping state. So when it is getting water, it is getting enough air, oxygen, it will start growing. So that moment, that thing is taken care by this gibberellin. So plant hormone that promotes the cell differentiation and breaking dormancy of the seeds and buds. So bud is just a bud. So it is just the bloom to become a flower. So all this is taken care by the gibberellins. Clear? Next. Next to two hormones. Cytokine and I'll take white. Last hormone, sir. Yeah. Is it okay? Sorry. Cytokine. Plant hormone that promotes cell division and opening and closing of the stomata. Opening and closing of the stomata, very, very important job. Yes. How is the opening of stomata? Opening and closing of stomata happens because of the guard cells. Yes or no? So the guard cells, it will absorb the water, it will become turbid. It will become. Then it will lose water because of transpiration and again it will become slender like this. Yes? Yes or no? Yes. So that is taken care by the cytokinin, opening and closing of stomata and also the cell division is taken care by this. Is that clear? Cell division, normally it happens, but then the bud becomes flower, flower becomes, sorry, flower becomes fruit. I mean the ovary becomes fruit and the ovule transforms into seeds. So there where most of cell division happens at a rapid stage. So there the cytokine helps or it promotes to happen. Mm, in every case, the ovary only turns into fruit, but what we eat varies. Sometimes we eat true fruit, sometimes we eat false fruit. True fruit like mangoes or true fruit which we eat. Strawberries are false fruit, pseudocarps which we eat. Eating is different, but ovary develops into a fruit, technically, biologically. Ovial develops into seed, okay? So that's fine. Last, abscisic acid. It helps in inhibiting the growth of the plant, promotes wilting and falling of leaves and food. So when you think about this abscisic acid, it may sound, oh my god, why? But listen, why is it happening? See, let's say this is a, let's say this is a stem. Okay. And here you have this leaf. Okay. Here you have this leaf. So here where this abscisic acid, this leaf is getting all the food, sorry, preparing the food, but it is getting water minerals from the root. So what will happen is like abscission layer starts developing here. I'll tell you where. See here, this area, can you see? So there an abscission layer develops. So when it is an abscission layer, the entire uh, communication gets cut or the transportation gets cut there. So when the transportation is cut, what is getting cut? 
water from the roots to the leaf is getting cut. Leaf when it is preparing the food, it is not able to give it to the other parts of the plant. So there where the block happens. So when the block is happening, automatically leaf will wither. Why is a leaf withering? Too much of leaf when it is there, too much of food is prepared. When too much of food is prepared, it has to get stored. When the plant thinks, okay, storage is enough, especially in the month of autumn, when a plant experiences autumn. So that time what will happen, it will say, okay, enough with this uh, climate or it's like it's a winter time where too much of sunlight is not there. It will say, okay, instead of having 100 leaves in me, let me have 50 leaves and survive. Okay, because energy which has been spent for 100 leaves is too much, right? So for that, the plant can decide, okay, secrete all this abscisic acid, let abscission layer be created in the junctions there and the leaf will automatically wither but the plant will stay or plant will survive that winter and again when the spring comes after winter autumn comes where the leaf all sheds and then what will happen spring comes where new leaves come because after spring it will be followed by the summer where you will in the spring new new leaves come it will start, start producing a lot of food it will start storing a lot of food and in summer it will store maximum food which we can eat. That's why like you can take mango tree as an example because it follows the entire cycle like this. Is it clear? Clear? So this is about the abscisic acid. So when you are talking about the plant hormones, four hormones comes into mind. Oxen, gibberellin, cytokinin, abscisic acid. Is that clear? So with which, with this we will be, we are ending this session. Ending this session means like uh, the control and coordination, one shot revision is done. So, in the next session, we will be discussing one of the most interesting magical chapter, favorite chapter of mine, heredity and evolution. So, every time when I am talking about heredity and evolution, I will say this to be a magical chapter. Why? Because I love the chapter a lot. Biology, the what to say, one of my most interesting chapter, right? All right. So, stay connected, revise properly, revise every time, watch the session again and again because all the major topics we have covered in this one short, one short revision. For elaborate sessions, okay, if you want to think, okay, how is this auxin exactly functioning, then you have to go back to the session and you can watch. But this is itself enough. If you are preparing for your exams, watch this, prepare well for your exams, have a written practice. This is what I am always telling in all the lessons, all the sessions. Why? Because you will have very limited time and you have to keep writing. All this while you wouldn't have started writing, right? You would have written, but not to that extent. So you have to start writing. If you write, your um, handwriting will get improved. Your uh, spellings, because when you are reading the spellings, okay, you know this is a spelling. But when you write only, you will know, okay, this is a spelling. For example, goiter, T-R-E or T-E-R. So those confusions will occur, will happen. So for all those things, you should have a good written practice. You should be continuously revising for your sessions. Is that clear? Yes. All right. So keep watching the sessions. Stay connected to Vistas Learning. Until and unless I meet you in my next session, this is Lavanya Elongovan signing off from V Learning. Bye bye. Take care.